If you want to level up your life and unlock the hottest, highest, and healthiest version of yourself, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to today's episode of Hot and Unbothered. beautiful people and welcome back to my podcast. If you are new here, my name is Brianna Gomez and I am your host of Hot and Unbothered, the ultimate podcast for unlocking the hottest, highest, healthiest, happiest version of you, the ideal version of yourself, achieving your dream life, achieving your goals, and really getting down into the nitty gritty on how we're going to really take the steps to learn and grow together and heal together and live our dream lives. I feel like everyone has that perception of themselves in their head, like what they think they want to be or who they know they could be like you know your potential you're visualizing it maybe you're dreaming about it daydreaming about it you have a journal where you're writing about it you're making pinterest boards just visualizing and picturing your dream ideal life the reason you're envisioning that is because your future self already has it the reason you have this feeling in you that you want more or that you are meant for more and to live this great life and accomplish all these successes and these great things it's because it's meant for you and it is calling to you. So Hot and Unbothered is all about how we are going to get there. I cannot believe that August is already here and among us. I don't know when you're listening to this. I feel like a lot of people start school sometime around early mid-August now, which is really bizarre because when I was in school for the first half of my school years, we always started school in September. August in my head is meant for summer, which is really weird because in California where I live, it's still 80 degrees in October. So crazy that back to school season is among us, but since we are getting to the the back to school season, I thought might as well get started with some back to school themed episodes for you guys, but also these lessons and this advice, anything I say in this episode, it could be implemented literally whenever. It could be used, you know, fall, spring, summer, out of school, in school. You could be graduated and done with school or you could be a sixth grader, you know? Like this advice, take it with a grain of salt and implement it as it fits. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. But today we are talking about how to be that girl at school. I know we all know that girl in school, okay? The girl who seems like she has her life together. You don't know if you want to be with her or if you want to be her. She just seems so cool, so calm, cool, and collected. She seems like the it girl. And this doesn't have to do with popularity necessarily. It really doesn't. But you know that girl where you look at her and you're like, I feel like her life must be so great. Or she always looks so put together. Someone who you might admire or look up to, or you know, you want to know what their secrets are. Like how how does she always look so good? How is she always so happy? How is her energy so magnetic? Today, I'm going to teach you how to be that girl. And like I was saying, so many other factors play into this apart from popularity or your appearance or beauty or anything like that. So I have a long list of things we are going to go through today that make up the perfect mixture, the perfect recipe on how to look like that girl, be that girl, feel like that girl. You are going to become her. Embody you're that girlness. Before we dive into today's episode, you guys know I love to share a podcast review. Today we have Lucy and she said, I love your podcast. They are so honest and helpful. Thank you so much for doing them. I really appreciate it. You are so beautiful and deserve so much love as anyone does. I certainly have become a more hot and unbothered version of myself after listening to these daily. I now love myself and understand that everything is okay. I'm doing so well and I'm so beautiful on the inside and out and this is because of you. Love you. Kisses. Crying in the club right now, guys. These comments and reviews, like, oh my goodness, you have no idea how much each and every single one of them reads my day. I read every single message, comment, review, even if I don't get back to it immediately, I try to. And seriously, like, sometimes it's hard for me to fathom that people are actually listening to what I'm saying, taking my advice, And like, it really humanizes the whole concept of my podcast, reminding me that people actually listen to and implement my advice. That is amazing and a dream come true for me. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if you want a chance to be featured in next week's episode, don't forget to leave a podcast review and let me know how you're liking the pod. All right, we've got a lot to get into today, ladies and gentlemen. So for starters, Being that girl, well, let's define that girl. I kind of went into it already, but you know, it's the girl who, it doesn't necessarily mean she's the most popular or has the most friends, but someone who feels like they are true, like, bliss and happiness and love and, like, 
magnetic positive energy in a human being. I feel like everyone wants to be that girl and I feel like, you know, it doesn't have to be just for high school or just for college. There are these people in everyday lives. I feel like you come across those people where you're like, wait, she looks like she has her shit together or she looks like, you know, she must have tons of secret admirers or tons of friends or she must be really happy on the inside. I feel like, you know, your perception of that girl can be very different depending on what your goals are in life and what your values are. But for me, there are many that girls. I come across those girls very often because every human being is so beautiful and has so much to offer. So I see some people like on a day-to-day -day basis where I'm like, she is her. And today we're going to talk about how you can become her. You can become that girl that people in school are going to see. Like, you're going to come back from summer and everyone's going to be like, who is she? Like, don't recognize her, don't know her, but I want to be her. Or I want to be her friend. Or I want to know exactly how she does it, how she looks so beautiful or feels so magnetic in her energy. We're going to teach you how to be her. And let me say, although I am not in school right now, I feel like I'm a very credible source because I went to school for 12 years, did the thing, had my regrets, had my good moments, had my bad moments, figured out what works and what doesn't, and today I'm here to spill all the secrets to you, the recipe to becoming the it girl at your school. This year is going to be our year. This is your hot and unbothered school year, meaning you are going to look hot, feel hot, embody magnetic energy, confidence, the whole thing, and you are going to be so unbothered because I feel like at school especially, that's where most people I feel like have that fear of judgment. They have that need for validation or they're scared of what other people will think of their choices or their style or their personality, whatever it may be. We're hot and unbothered this year. It does not matter. This year is for you and you only. You're never going to see these people again. Okay, number one thing I have to say for having a successful, happy school year is to romanticize the school year. And I know you might be like, what? Because when I was in school, I honestly despised it for the most part, especially the learning part. I did not look forward to it. I was not a huge like math by the book type logical person. So that automatically made me dread school for the most part. But here's what I want you to do. Going into the end of summer, I want you to literally watch like shows movies whatever that will help you romanticize school so whatever your taste is whether it be gossip girl whether it be a high school musical movie whether it's glee one tree hill there are some great shows that honestly when i watch them it kind of makes me miss school so watch some shows i feel like that's such a random little tip but get yourself in the vibe to actually be like wait School can be fun. School can be more interesting, you know? It doesn't have to be this like, oh, wake up, go to school, do my homework, go to sleep, do it all over again and dread the whole thing. Make it something fun. Make it something exciting. Take inspiration from these shows or movies that you're watching, you know? Maybe there's certain characters you resonate with. Maybe they're doing stuff in the show that makes you super excited, you know? Football games or dances, plays, things like that. It sounds really, really corny coming out of my mouth right now, but I swear by it give it a try. Just watch something that's going to kind of put you in the back to school mood or even those like 2014-esque back to school YouTube videos like the Bethany Moda YouTube videos. I don't know if this is like the wrong generation for that. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but seriously, those back to school YouTube videos, those hit different and there's so many ideas for like back to school lunches, back to school outfits. So really start by finding inspiration for school. You know, what kind of year do you want to have? Do you want to be a Blair Waldorf this school year? Do you want to be a Brooke Davis of One Tree Hill. Like there's so many different characters and ideas to kind of get inspired by. Obviously you don't have to live your school year by the book like these characters, but I think it's such a good idea to kind of get yourself in the mood, get yourself typed for school and kind of look at school through a different perspective that it actually can be very interesting and entertaining. And honestly, once you're out of school, you're kind of going to miss that like liveliness and the opportunity to see people every day, get involved with different things and events. Like it is is very fun. Looking back on it now, it is fun. You can even romanticize it down to doing your homework. It sounds so silly when I say it, but you are not just struggling, slaving away, doing your homework. You are Rory Gilmore. You are studious. You're working up to getting into a good college or just getting your good grades in general, studying to ace that test, working hard, being studious, being smart, being educated. Romanticize it because you're going to have to do it anyway, 
why not find a way to make it a little more enjoyable? There are even Pinterest boards for studious girls like Rory Gilmore core. It sounds so silly to think of it that way. But again, like I said, you're going to have to do the work. You're going to have to go to school. You're going to have to learn. Might as well make it a little more interesting. Like if you're going to do it, do it in an aesthetic way. Another way that really helps to get excited for school, obviously buying new school supplies. You don't have to break the bank for this, but you know, get a cute colored notebook instead of getting the plain black boring one, get the pink one or tie little ribbons around your backpack or your notebooks or your pens. Color code your planner, plan out your days, you know, write down your assignments in cute fonts or cute colors. It's so easy to make those little changes that really just make it feel like you're doing something cute instead of doing something boring that everyone else does. And having cute school supplies keeps you so much more organized and it makes you so much more excited to take notes. I loved taking notes in color-coded ways and doing like calligraphy or doodles on the pages. I thought that it was so fun and honestly, I wish, I do wish that I could go back to taking notes and writing things on paper. I hardly get to write or draw or doodle or anything anymore and it's so fun. So again, just take advantage of that. Get the cute school supplies, get the colorful pens, do the whole thing and I promise it makes it that much more fun and you kind of look forward to taking the notes and I feel like it just works better in your brain. You know, our brains respond better to color-coded things and to planners, things like like that having designated colors for different subjects so easy and so cute and fun now that you have your supplies and your inspiration you need to come back to school being the ideal version of yourself summer happened no one saw you for however many months you have the opportunity to start fresh every single day you can start fresh but after summer especially like you have the opportunity to show up and just make jaws drop and i'm not saying get plastic surgery and show up with a whole new body and face and everything change your name like no little changes mainly happen energetically which i will get into in just a second but you know get the haircut switch up the way you do your makeup reinvent your wardrobe you guys the way you dress for school is so game changer when it comes to the type of day you're going to have and by that I mean on days in school where I you know woke up late rolled out of bed I hated my hair I hated my makeup I hated my outfit I felt like shit and the entire day I was like I can't wait to just go home I don't want anyone to see me I don't want anyone to look at me like get me out of here I feel so insecure I feel disgusting what you need to do of course like for your reinvention you know focus on your self-care focus on your wellness find fun ways to style your hair, fun ways to dress yourself. I think as the school year starts again, everyone should go through their closet, deep closet clean out, try on everything in your closet. One, you might have some hidden gems in the back of your closet that were collecting dust. And at the time when you tried it on, maybe you didn't like the way it looks on your body, but like you put it on now and you're like, wait, like I could repurpose this. I see styling this with this new skirt I got, things like that. You never know. And then also get rid of the things that you don't like anymore. I feel like holding on to old clothes that you don't even like is like carrying dead weight. And it also gets you to put on clothes that you don't like because you'll be grabbing for clothes that like are so old, not you anymore. You don't like the way it looks. You don't like the way it feels. So getting a new wardrobe does not mean going out and buying a ton of clothes which you totally can do and can be very fun if you have the budget for a back to school wardrobe but also at the same time it's just finding ways to reinvent or bring life to old pieces in your closet finding new ways to style certain things you know switching it up for new shoes maybe you used to wear these jeans with converse but now they look super cute with some boots or like a platform mary jane something like that you know maybe you want to elevate your style a little bit be a little more sophisticated Elevating your style for the new school year so so powerful selling your old clothes is a super easy way to make some extra cash and then i like to use that cash to shop secondhand again or some sort of sustainable fashion speaking of clothes i have my own personal clothing design that i have it's a set it's a super cute halter top in this skirt that would be so so good for school or any occasion it has built-in shorts it's not too short you could choose a longer version or a mini version too whatever you like and it's available only until september 16th but it is all sustainably made by hand and i designed it and it's super cool limited edition there's bows all over it so if you guys are looking for cute new outfits for the new season let me know so cute for layering mix and matching and i'll have it links for you guys if you want to support but making a pinterest board for back to school outfits is super useful finding kind of inspiration from again those shows or pinterest boards instagram that you kind of want your style to be inspired by it's super fun to make new outfits using the stuff that's already in your closet or buying new things for affordable prices fashion plays a huge part I feel like when it comes to looking put together so obviously your outfit even if I know some people like to wear 
sweatpants or PJs to school. I think if you're going to wear sweats, I personally wear whatever you want, but I personally never really was a sweatpants person in school. But if I were to now be in school, I would totally opt for like a cute matching tracksuit set, something like that, you know, matching hoodie, matching sweats, some platform Uggs. You are totally allowed to be comfortable. Whatever you feel the best and most confident or most comfortable in, wear that, but make sure it makes you feel comfortable. Like if I'm showing up in like a torn up old stained t-shirt and some baggy pajama pants I definitely am not going to feel the most confident or ready to learn but if I take those extra five minutes to put on a cute matching set or you know put my hair in a slick back hairstyle to feel a little more me and put together and ready for the day I feel so much more like ready and willing to learn and actually be there and not hate my day and hate the way I look and want to go home immediately. Accessorizing is also a huge one. I have been so into accessories lately. Amazon has great ones. I'll link you guys some of my favorites, but it's so easy to just put on some accessories. Again, even if you're wearing a more bummy, comfy, chill day outfit, putting on your jewelry literally makes all the difference and I feel like that's a huge that girl aspect at least in my brain when I see a girl wearing cute stacked jewelry layered rings layered necklaces I think they are automatically 10 times cooler maybe that's a personal preference but I love seeing girls with jewelry like cute watches cute rings earrings something like that you don't have to do the whole shebang for school but personally my confidence skyrockets when I'm wearing my jewelry and it plummets on days I forget my jewelry oh my gosh on days I forget my jewelry I am so sad and I feel naked and I don't feel like myself again maybe this is just a personal preference thing but personally I think girls look so much more put together when they have some sort of jewelry on get your own statement necklace like a locket or your initial something that's your own personal like signature thing I think that's super cute you just wear it all the time you don't even have to take it off I highly recommend something like stainless steel or just good quality that's not going to tarnish so it looks you know more expensive but again you can get cheap good quality jewelry on Amazon. So good. Love it. Also, I would recommend keeping maybe like a spare pair of earrings or something in your school bag for days where you forget your jewelry, you're running late, you are ready and you will not have a horrible day because you forgot your earrings because you'll have backups. I honestly wish I've done that so, so many times before. And then there's always the little maintenance things, whatever's more important to you. You know, some people like to prioritize their nails. Some people it's eyelashes. Some people it's their eyebrows, but it's the high maintenance thing to be low maintenance. So things like nails, eyebrows, lashes, those things, yes, they might be investments. So I'm not saying you have to go get this done at a professional place, but even just doing it yourself, it can make the biggest difference, again, in your confidence or how you appear, like in your maintenance routine, hygienically, or you just look more put together. I love little things like that. And again, when you are just at school, guys, school lighting, the crusty school fluorescent lighting, that, whew, I don't even blame anybody. I feel like everyone's, like, appearance drops down by 10% at least in that school lighting. It's so bad. So having the little things, just keeping it super clean and put together and sleek, the little details, those honestly will take you so far because that school lighting, it does us so dirty. I hate the way that my makeup would look all crusty in the school light. Also, you're getting ready process. Focus on your skincare, you know, make sure your skin is constantly moisturized. And then I think a huge, huge aspect is to really work on simplifying your getting ready routine. So obviously the high maintenance to be low maintenance things, but then also, you know, you don't need to be wearing a full beat to school. Again, this is all personal preference, but for me, if I'm going to be running late in the morning, I'll stick to like three or four good products that I know I can get on quickly and will look good and will not fail me. So for me, that's a CC cream or like a tinted sunscreen or moisturizer to help my skin, some concealer, some mascara, and maybe some cream blush. I think that looks way better on me personally. Again, this is personal preference, but then a full beat because the full beat, at least in my experience under the school lighting, <gasps> Oh my goodness. But I always feel like less is more, especially for school. Try different makeup looks and skincare routines and hair routines. See what works for you. See what doesn't. But again, stick to routines that you know will not fail you and won't look horrible in the school lighting and will last you the whole day opposed to like when the makeup starts creasing and getting all greasy and gross and like basically sliding off your face at the end of the day. We don't want that. Keep it simple. Keep it clean. And I swear it will take you so much further. And that fluorescent gross lighting. Ugh. While we're on the topic of just trying to look good through 
throughout the day. I highly, highly cannot recommend enough making your own little it girl emergency kit and taking it with you everywhere in your bag, especially to all your classes throughout the school day. This is obviously customizable to your personal preference, but a few things I think every girl needs in her bag, obviously some sort of lip balm, lip moisturizer, because you do not want to have crusty lips at school. Please, 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 I beg of you. And then if you want to add on to that a cute lip gloss or, you know, a double whammy, a lip color that also is moisturizing, Summer Fridays, actually I heard that that might not be that good, but Summer Fridays, I have these amazing it cosmetics like lip hydration colors they're so good and they taste like cherries it's called confidence in a serum gloss and it's 90% base hyd hydratant whatever that means it's super hydrating and it's so yummy and it has really cute colors some sort of moisturizer maybe one that you could use on your face and your hands and then maybe some like pressed powder or concealer to help oil blotting sheets those are a huge one and then some little things obviously like feminine hygiene products band-aids, q-tips, whatever you think you might need. One that's in my emergency kit is eye drops. I use whitening eye drops almost every single day. I don't know if that's the best for you, but they really help me look more awake and I swear by them because I'm a sleep deprived girly a lot of the times and my eyes get bloodshot so easily. So I like hearing eye drops. I think they make a huge difference in making you look more awake. You know, your little travel size makeup products, maybe a mini mascara or a brow gel, baby concealer, something like that. Those are huge a travel size perfume and then please if you struggle with like headaches cramps back aches anything like that some sort of painkiller you know mitol pamperin advil ibuprofen something like that or you know if you get really bad allergies keep your allergy pills with you things that you find yourself often being like oh i wish i had this right now or you know other people asking hey does anyone have advil band-aids perfume things like that i try to keep it all on me because one i love being that friend that's like yeah I do have it. Anyone need a tampon? Anyone need Advil? Anyone need mascara? Got you covered. Also good is like a mini hairbrush or hairspray, dry shampoo, deodorant, deodorant. The hygiene products I feel like are the most important. Like even mouthwash or gum mints of some sort. Those um, little Listerine strips that you put on your tongue to help with bad breath. Those are like so fun and I used to love when people had those at school. Hand sanitizer, of course. A little pocket-sized compact mirror. I had one with a portable charger. Those are so fun. However much you could fit in your pouch. Some people's emergency pouches are so tiny. Some are huge. Oh, hair ties. Hair ties or hair clips. Gosh, I could go on and on. If you guys want I'll do like a what's in my emergency kit video maybe on YouTube shorts or I could do a full one on YouTube Let me know if that's something that you guys would want to see because I seriously have so many little emergency kit pouches all over like my room my car all my purses i swear by those things if you guys keep an emergency kit comment what you keep in there because i think it is such a good idea a lot of people keep tied to ghost sticks sorry it seems like this episode is all about emergency kits it's not about that but it girl emergency kit you need one and i promise it will save you when you least expect it and again school is not all about appearance but i think it has a huge thing to do with your confidence because again when i'm feeling confident i have such a better day at work or school or wherever I am that I need to be focused in opposed to when I'm not feeling my cutest or my most confident I'm just like thinking about that and insecure about that worried about that all day if you don't struggle with that props to you I think that you should be able to show up to school however you want wear whatever you want look however you want you know you're only there for you you truly are at the end of the day there to learn so it's not meant to be to impress other people but for me personally treating school like a fashion show it's not a fashion show but but treating school like a fashion show is always fun and it gives me something to look forward to. So, you know, it really helps if I have an outfit that I'm looking forward to wearing or I want to do a cute hairstyle one day and I just kind of take the extra five minutes to, you know, get ready, do my makeup, do my skincare. Try to look forward to getting ready and making sure you feel cute so that you have a successful, vibrant, positive, confident day. I had days where I felt like my hair looked super frizzy, things like that, and I was just so distracted the whole day. I'd catch a glimpse of my reflection and I'd be like, oh my gosh, like my hair, like I need to go home. No one can see me like this. Again, in the least conceited way possible, it didn't really have as much to do with what other people thought of me, but more so how I felt about myself, you know? And you want to feel cute if that's going to be a distracting factor for you, you want to feel cute. A huge, huge part of this is overall to set yourself up for success the next day. And I do mean not even just 
picking out your outfit the next day, which is huge. Like try it on, get excited for what you're about to wear, plan your outfits in advance, lay it out for you the night before, but just doing things every single night that are going to make your morning run that much smoother, especially if you're not a morning person. I know it can be a pain and I think that's an aspect that a lot of people dislike about school is the hours. So having that outfit ready for the next day, but also packing your bag for the next day so that you could just grab it and go, making your smoothie to grab and go in the morning for breakfast, prepping your lunch, filling your water bottle, making sure your homework's done, you studied, you're prepared, all of those things, it really comes down to preparing yourself for success for the following day. Sleep with a heatless hairstyle, things like that. If you struggle with getting up early, setting yourself up the night before will give you at least like 15, 10 extra minutes of sleep and relaxation to really enjoy your time and go slow in the morning because the worst thing you could do for yourself at school is rush there. Rushing to school, work, wherever you're going, any function, it's never fun. And I hate that feeling of showing up like out of breath, I broke a sweat, you know, I'm not ready, I'm missing things, I'm discombobulated, all my stuff's all over the place place that's the worst feeling and that girl does not do that obviously that happens every now and then everyone's subject to running late everyone has their days where they accidentally sleep past their alarm things like that but to help prevent the running late and the discombobulation and the overall unorganization set yourself up the night before game changer i promise a huge crucial aspect to becoming that girl for the school year and getting your shit together is becoming more productive and disciplined and following a consistent routine. Consistency, productivity, and discipline are huge crucial roles when it comes to having a successful school year. And I honestly learned this from my lack of thereof <laughs> from my lack of being productive I was always a last minute kind of girly and I hated it I was always like scrambling in between classes like with my homework outside of the door of the classroom trying to get it done at the last second don't don't do that and I have my days where I would like get on track for like a week and use my agenda and plan out everything write out my assignments be ahead of the game and I always admired people with that like you look at that girl and her assignments are just done she's not stressed out like you don't want to be that girl at school who can't talk at lunch with her friends or enjoy her food or do something fun after school because you saved the big project for the last second you know what I mean you want to be prepared and you want to be on top of things and don't push things off to the last second oh my gosh procrastination was my biggest op that was my biggest fatal flaw all of my years of school so bad there were projects and assignments that I know I could have done really really well on but instead I just kind of screwed myself over by saying like oh I'll start it tomorrow I'll start it tomorrow or I'm gonna focus on you know sleeping or partying or being on my phone doing something else other than what I could have gotten out of the way so my biggest advice for assignments and homework things like that is obviously do it gradually so that way it's not just like a huge big scary daunting project being there at the last second but if you break things up day by day of course it's going to be easier less intimidating and you're way more likely to do well and then of course having that consistent morning and night routine so trying to get to bed at the same time every single night because throughout the school week you're going to be most likely waking up at the same time every morning so when you're waking up at the same time every morning and going to sleep at the same time every night it will become so much more easy if you create that habit within yourself if you instill in your brain okay like when it hits 11 o'clock time to go to bed, lights out, no exceptions, and then your body gets used to it over time and it will become easier. You know, the first time that you have to wake up at 6 a.m., not going to feel so easy, but if you're waking up at 6 a.m. every day for a month even, it becomes so much easier. So having a very consistent routine, knowing that, you know, you're going to wake up, let the light in, make your bed, things like that, I highly recommend don't skip breakfast. I know that doesn't work for some people. Speaking from personal experience, I know personally that makes my day even better just by taking taking the extra 10 minutes to make breakfast fuel my body, at least have things ready to grab and go so that you're not starving at school. And then doing the little things like making your bed in the morning, doing your full skin routine, try to leave time for those little regimens and have a little mini day 
or routine before you start your school day. You know, taking some time just to be with yourself, even if it's just five minutes in your journal or listening to your favorite music on the way to school, do something that's going to set you up for a good day and something that gives you something to look forward to in your routine. And at nighttime, like do some stretching, power off your phone well before it's time to go to bed, read a good book, something like that, but getting very consistent with your routine and holding yourself accountable to it. Something I've struggled with for a long time and I still don't do perfectly is consistency. Since I am not in school anymore, it's very hard for me to maintain a consistent routine. But when I do, I found that I feel so much better and just ready for the day when I am keeping myself accountable. And something that I feel kind of goes hand in hand with this is truly taking care of your body and not neglecting your wellness and your well-being and your personal health, mental and physical all things are just actually more important than that grade that you're going to get on test. Your education is important. Don't get me wrong, but your well-being and your body and your mind is just as important, if not more. Because while it is important to study and learn and get your education in and do well in school, I know a lot of people who were bending over backwards, doing sleepless nights or hardly even focusing on their well-being or mental health or not eating because they were so focused over the stress and weight of school. So while it is important, you need to find a healthy balance. And by that, I mean, don't neglect your well-being. You know, if it comes down to it's the middle of the night, 2 a.m. and you have to wake up at 6 and you're working on a project, like go to sleep. I don't know if that's bad advice or good advice. And I did that all at the time in high school. And I wished so, so badly that I would have just started earlier so that I could have just gotten my good night's sleep. And when you are young, I'm not saying that I'm not young anymore, but even when I was in high school, I felt like I was invincible. I could go sneak out at night, do fun things with my friends, or, you know, stay up all night, pull that all night, or doing that project at the last second, and then go to school the next day on literally zero seconds of sleep. And you feel like you can do it all. You feel like you're invincible, but I promise you, it will catch up to you and you are just hurting yourself way more than you're helping yourself. So really try to implement that routine that's going to help you make sure you are focusing on your well-being and constantly taking care of your body because you need your brain for school and your brain is not going to work if your body is not in tune with it, if your body is not being fed. You need to feed your body in order to feed your mind and your mind is what feeds your education. You need it all. I feel like people tend to separate the two and kind of choose one over the other, sacrifice you know, their mental health for their school grades when they're really all working hand in hand to work together. They're not separate things. You need to find a balance between all of it in order to find success in the school year or in your work life. Another very that girl thing to do is getting involved with hobbies, extracurriculars, team sports. Obviously, don't join the cheerleading team just because you want to be cool or look cool or that girl did it in the movie or this popular girl's doing it. Don't do that if you don't truly like it. I'm not saying don't try new things. I think everyone should try something new, especially whether it's a team sport, extracurricular, or a club because it's great, great to make friends that way. But something that will introduce you to people with similar interests, similar lifestyles, who you think you'll really get along with, and you might surprise yourself. I feel like that's such a mom thing to say. Like, sweetie, just try out for the volleyball team. You never know who you'll meet. But it's true. It is true. You never know who you'll meet. But also don't force yourself to do things that you wouldn't want to. If I went to college, like I feel like I would not be into Greek life. I don't know if I really see myself doing that. I feel like, I don't know. I don't know. It's all about finding your circle. So don't force yourself to stay in situations situations and clubs or extracurriculars that you tried and you're like, okay, this is clearly not for me, but you know, give it a try. Give yourself some options. You might surprise yourself. You might have a really good talent for basketball or cheer or something like that, dance. And I feel like those girls, the it girls, they always have some sort of hobby, especially extra points for hobbies that keep you active, keep you moving, or keep you creative. So, you know, I was in cheer and I love, love, love cheer. So many of my friends were on cheer. That's how I really established my main friend group. But I also did cheer before and I loved it. I knew I liked it. It was a great sport and I was 
fully into it. I loved competing and it was really nice to feel like you were a part of something and getting involved for football games, pep rallies, competitions, things like that. So fun. Again, that might not be for everybody. Maybe you want to join student council. Maybe you want to join yearbook. Maybe you want to invent your own club. I was in fashion club for a little bit. There's so many fun things to do and I feel like this sounds so gross, cringy, like high school core, but this goes for even college. There's extracurriculars or activities and groups everywhere that you can become involved in and I highly recommend. Great way to meet people and make connections. Also, I feel like it's so it girl to keep like a journal or a notebook or a book with you at all times, you know, to draw or write or read. Headphones always have something that is keeping you kind of in a creative mode and also I love having things like that personally for like awkward social settings. Like if I was waiting to be picked up, like oh, I wish I had headphones so I could just act like nobody knows me, nobody see me, like I'm cool, mysterious girl, don't talk to me. Because while it's important to meet people, make connections, make friendships, it's equally as important to deepen your relationship with yourself at all times and I feel like when you're in school, it becomes a little trickier to do that for a lot of people because you're surrounded by people constantly and then when you're home, you might be having to, you know, do schoolwork or regular work, things like that. So it is easy to lose touch with yourself. So that's why having, you know, headphones, to listen to a podcast to your favorite music or your notebook, journaling, drawing, things like that, a good book. It is important to equally spend time with yourself and make sure you're constantly deepening and strengthening that connection with you. While we're on the topic of meeting people and building friendships and relationships with other people and yourself, really, really focus on confidence. Confidence is the number one key to becoming that girl, not just in school, but all around. Focus on your self-concept. Self-concept, I have a whole episode on that I highly recommend listening to, but your self-concept is essentially the idea that your perception of yourself is how other people will perceive you as well. So if you walk into school and you're like, I'm so shy, no one's gonna like me, I'm so nervous, I'm so embarrassed, that is most likely how people will perceive you, not because that's the truth, but because that's the energy and the aura that you're giving off. Other people will pick up on that. Energy is so transferable. So what you need to do when you're walking into school this year, when you walk into school every morning, when you walk anywhere, you need to walk in that room like you own it, like you are that girl, you've been that girl, you know you're that girl, and that you truly don't care what anyone else thinks. And a huge part of self-concept and confidence is the idea that anyone can tell you anything about you. It could be negative and you don't let that skew your perception of yourself because you are so sure of who you are that nothing anybody else could say could possibly change that. Because in school, you know, you might deal with bullies. You might deal with strongly opinionated people and the whole idea of confidence is to detach from that attachment to outside opinion, that constant fear of outside opinion and judgment and that constant need for validation from others let that go. You have to let that go because if you spend your experience in school, you know, wearing certain things because it's trending or because someone else is wearing it or, you know, just doing things because they're cool or not doing the things you truly love and following your passions because you're scared of what someone else might think, not dressing the way you want to dress, like you have to stay true to yourself and that is truly one of the biggest pieces of advice I have because if you're in school, you know, that's a great opportunity to meet people, find your crowd, network, make new connections, but you will never truly find your people or your passions if you're constantly running away from your true self. If you're not truly deeply rooted and confident in who you are and you're pretending to be someone else, you will never find your true people. Be confident in yourself because I would so much rather stand alone and be true to myself than go through the pain of pretending to be someone else and surrounded by hundreds of people because that will never ever benefit you at the end of the day. Let go of the attachment of validation and truly work on yourself and your magnetic energy and your confidence. Be so sure of yourself that you don't need anyone else to tell you who you are because when it really comes down to it, sure, like you might look cute at school, you might join the cheerleading squad, but if that's not your people, that's not your people and at the end of the day, everyone can pick up on your energy and wouldn't you so much rather be magnetic and full of life and love and just be vibrant and glowing than be kind of like hiding to yourself in a shell and not letting your true self free. Again, walking into this year, you have the opportunity to start completely fresh. It's a clean slate. Whatever happened last year, the years before, this summer, it doesn't matter anymore. You get to decide 
who you want to be. You get to decide the life you want to live, who you're going to show up as every single day. So why not show up as your dream self? Overall, to sum things up, I think it's important to truly find gratitude in education. You know, not everyone gets the opportunity to learn. And now that I'm out of school, I actually enjoy learning a lot more. I hated history. I still don't really like math. No offense. But, you know, I still enjoy learning Spanish. I still enjoy interesting facts about history or science. I find more interest in it now that I don't have to do it, but it's like I kind of wish I retained more information while I was there in the moment, while I had the tools and the facilities and the teachers right in front of me to learn. And this sounds so corny and a little nerdy, but like learning is cool, okay? It's cool to be smart. I feel like people sometimes fall under the spell of like trying to play dumb and they want to be that ditzy cute girl. No, like learn. You are here to learn and you're given this opportunity for an amazing education, why not use it? Because there are people out there who would sell their right arm for an education. You know what I mean? And we just have it right here in front of us. Why not romanticize it every single day and show up excited? And if the learning doesn't get you excited, then maybe the outfits will. And maybe the social aspect will. And maybe, you know what I mean? Like, it's an excuse to get out of the house. It's an excuse to learn. Just like view it as a social event. If all else fails, if you can't get excited about school, if you can't get grateful for it, view it as a social outing or a fashion show or something, but find ways to look forward to school because you truly are blessed. And that sounds so corny, but you truly are blessed to be there. So enjoy it while you can because the year goes by so fast. School in general goes by so fast. So weird that I most likely will never step foot in a classroom ever again until my future children are in school. So that's crazy. It's really going to fly by. Enjoy it. Live in the moment. Get involved. You're not too cool for school. You're not too cool for the dances, for the events. Like, go to those things, enjoy yourself, and fully be present in the moment because it's going to be over before you know it. It's like that saying, like, you don't know you're in the good old days until they're over, but it's true. And I'm not saying I, like, peaked in high school or anything and I wish I could go back to high school. Guys, I also didn't get a graduation. I graduated in 2020, so this is all just me living vicariously through you guys because, honestly, I wish I got a graduation and a prom and all those good things, but no. So, you guys, please be grateful that you got that or that you're going to get those things because... (laughs) Not everyone did, okay? Anyways, I believe that sums up today's episode. If you enjoyed, don't forget to follow Hot and Unbothered on all platforms at Hot Unbothered on TikTok and Instagram. My personals, you can always keep up with me at Brianna Gomez with two Bs on Snapchat. I document a lot on their Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, the whole shebang. I am so, so grateful for every single one of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you next free day. Bye.